episode. In this episode, me and Mike just kind of have a general conversation about Saturnalia, and it kind of takes us down a rabbit hole into a couple other topics, and we keep bringing it back to Saturn and Saturnalia and the general consensus of what this time of year kind of represents and the qualities of Saturn itself. So I hope you really enjoy this episode and that you find some value in it and learn a little bit about Saturnalia you may not have known before. So I appreciate it and enjoy. EO Saturnalia, right? All right. Welcome to another episode of the Esoteric Scholar. And we're back with Mike and we're going to talk about Saturnalia today. And we're bringing it back. <laughs> oh, yes. man. We were just talking off off the recording about uh, how this year has just been a little bit different. Not quite feeling like the Christmas vibes. And we'll talk a little bit about that, too. But um, what, are you, what were you just bringing up, Mike? What were you talking about? Uh, we were talking about Saturn and Jupiter kissing. And uh, that being, I think, on the 21st. But I'll yeah. have to look that up, actually. Yeah, I believe it is, because I think it's going to be on the winter solstice, like the morning of, depending on where you're at, the um, Saturn and Jupiter are going to be like in conjunction with each other, and, and is it right, conjunction? Let's look that up real quick. Yeah, they'll be right in line yeah. with each other. It happens, what, what every, every 800 years? I'm impressed. Something, something like that, like 300 or 800, it, longer than a normal lifespan, for sure. So, like, this is something that's once in a generation, once in a a couple generations event, for sure. Right. Yeah, let's look that up. They're in conjunction. That is when they have the same right ascension or celestial longitude. Mm -hmm. They're within a couple degrees of each other on the the natal chart or the chart that you cast. Yeah. Yeah, which is pretty powerful, you know, Um, which is interesting because... We're going to be talking about Saturnalia, and Saturn is the the god of restriction and you know justice and um, you know kind of limitations and boundaries. You know, he's he's that cold, fatherly figure that you know isn't unloving but is very strict. <laughs> and if you follow his rules, you'll be fine. So it's interesting. Um, what are your what are your thoughts on Saturn in general, like both planetariness and God form? Um, <laughs> Saturn, it, 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 uh, I haven't, you know, as actually Saturn. Now, you know, like I said, I never put much thought into it aside for the. I really thought it was an interesting holiday, and that it was right now at the same time of uh, like Christmas. But sad, so I really couldn't say too much about the God himself and the planet because I haven't delved too much into them myself. Yeah, that's respectable. So the Saturn rules, or is it, yeah, so Saturn's ruler is Capricorn or Capricorn ruler is Saturn, which, you know, we're kind of in, get rushing into that season, right? So yeah. we're currently in the Sagittarius season, if I believe so, and we're going to be looking into Sagitt- or Capricorn season soon. Which and is I am. What's, yeah, yeah. What's your birthday? Uh, January 18th. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of interesting how this all plays together, and obviously probably by grand design. But um, so let's talk a little bit about Saturnalia then, right? <laughs> So, interesting enough, the Romans, they had this idea that the god of the harvest was Saturn, and that to honor him during his feast, during the the winter solstice period, it started out as one day feasting, and the idea was to celebrate a better time, a, a time that was before the roman you know um era like it it was a mythological past golden era where saturn ruled and everything was in balance and in harmony which kind of ties into how aquarius and um saturn also in, in astrology play a role together 
not Aquarius, Libra. Um, but the idea is they, over the course of the Roman evolution, it started from one day on December 17th. And it spanned up depending on the emperor, depending on, you know, the, the social norms, it spanned up to a week of celebrations. And during this time, anything that was normal was cast out and, you know, people celebrated. What do you think the most common thing that they did to celebrate was? Um, well, I know that uh, the masters and the slaves switched roles. Um, I watched several videos on this and tried to research as much as I could. But yeah, that, that, that was like one of the more interesting things to me is that they switched roles in, in that the masters served the slaves and the slaves were the masters for a day. However, that was within reason, obviously, from ev everything I saw and read. Uh, but, uh, uh, and uh, uh, so that's, that to me, I think, was the most interesting thing that that happened. So immediately I went into what kinds of things were the slaves making the masters do? And knowing Romans, it, you know, that, that actual imagination can just, can basically just run rampant with you. Yeah. Yeah. That was kind of the most popular thing or the most written about thing. Like Saturnalia, it's a, the documentation is a sad part of history because you have individual accounts of Saturnalia. There's no like big historical lineage to Saturnalia. You just have all these accounts of, from individual people and their observations and their patterns of celebration. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, like the switching of slaves uh, with owners is very interesting in my mind because in the theme of Saturn and restrictions and barriers and breaking through barriers, it plays into that idea that anything can be taken from you at any moment and you can be in the opposite position you are. So a very Saturn vibe there, right? Right. Yeah. And something I thought was interesting is you have to kind of keep in your mind. So you have to like be that person in, you know, 480 or 40 AD or wherever the time frame is that in the scale that you are participating in and what the climate would be like, you know, cause, cause we were just talking about <clears throat> winter and Christmas and how it wouldn't be Christmas without like cold weather and snow. Well, they really didn't get the cold winter. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would liken them to kind of like uh, maybe California, LA to where maybe they get maybe maximum about 40 degrees third. I mean, but never really reaching freezing. Exactly. Yeah. It's like 40 degrees Fahrenheit throughout there uh, in the, the winter time, which to me kind of blew my mind. Cause you know, I'm thinking the uh, winter harvest, the darkness, the cold, like you're huddling in, you know, for a long winter battling the elements when really it was just a cooler climate than that of the summer and it got darker early. So the harvest literally was all through winter. Like you just had different crops and stuff and they weren't producing as well, obviously. But um, that, so the, the winter harvest wasn't like your final harvest and then you stopped. They still worked through it. And so you'd worship Saturn within the winter harvest because he's the, the God of restriction. So you're not growing as much. You have less really during this period of time. So you have to learn that constraint and what grows when type scenario. So this idea of rituals and sacrifices and worship of Saturn during this period of time makes sense because if in my mind, if you step it back a couple you know, more thousand years when you start having more animus mentality where these spirits give, you know, you, when you have less, you want to worship more. Um, you know, even Christians do that right now. <laughs> you, uh, when you need something or you're in trouble, you pray, but when you're having a good time, you forget to say thank you. <laughs> well, right, right. Absolutely. And it's always in our time of need where we're going, Oh God, you know, when we're pushed to the ground, we're going, oh, geez, that's usually when we look to God or to whoever our higher power is. 
So yeah, absolutely. Exactly. So I, I thought that was interesting that during this time that they were still actually harvesting, I thought they had been done and that they were just weathering the storm, but um, I was wrong on that account there. Oh. The, you know, something I'm confused about, and I tried to research this a little bit more, but the actual date of Saturnalia, because the Julian calendar is off from the Gregorian calendar by like a week, give or take a few days. So they keep on referencing that the Saturnalia starts on December 17th. And I'm thinking that maybe that's the 10th, but every reference I see is December 17th. And one of the clarifying things I think that makes sense on is they say that the winter solstice um, from the Julian calendar would actually be on December 25th. And then in the modern calendar, it's December 21st. Ah. Um, give or take, right? Um, so, so that would be the discrepancy that I kept seeing was that they all had an idea of when it started, but they, but the variance of when it seemed to end changed throughout history. And according to each one of those written yes, yes. testimonies, you know? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it, it seems like the party of a century. Like, we, we, I wish we would do this. You know, oh, down everything. I mean, <laughs> there, it was just an absolute, I mean, dude, I sat one night and tried to imagine what it would have been like. And I was like, that must have been insane. Because they have accounts of, and I forget the guy's name, I should have wrote it down, but he built a soundproof room just so that he could work during that week alone, you know? exactly <laughs> you know exactly all day all night <laughs> drinking just everything i mean i couldn't imagine i i love it though because it it brings that connection of modern people to ancient people because sometimes you'll read these accounts from a biased perspective and you're just like everyone's having fun everyone's partying everyone's worshiping and it's just a blast and then you you see those accounts and you're like, well, no, you still have these people that you know, bah humbug, you know, right. that want to do their things. So right. it has that mashup. Oh yeah. Yeah. I imagined it was probably something like Vegas on the 4th of July. You know, <laughs> just, just, <laughs> I mean, just don't speak of it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. Yeah. And what's interesting is another thing I thought in, is interesting is how gambling became more acceptable. I didn't realize that gambling was such a non-accepted thing in, in the Roman Empire. I didn't either. Uh, that was new to me. I thought, you know, I thought that was common in all the shows, you know, when they go to the bars, they're gambling. and Yeah. So it's like, okay. But yeah, it was a, a big no-no aside for right now they can do it. Yeah, exactly. So that was pretty impressive as well. And how many uh, slaves were lost in the gamblings, you know, and how many slaves actually won their, uh, uh, you know, independence that way. You know, that is, that would be interesting to know. Uh -huh. like, cause, cause you could, you could strategize that. Wouldn't that be an awesome way as a slave? Like you were in control, be like, I'm going to gamble for my freedom now. Let's roll the dice. And then like, that I wonder if that would hold up in ancient Roman courts. I'm not sure. I mean, <laughs> could feasibly order your master, you have to place this bet, and wherever the dice rolls, rolls. You know, I mean, in a room full of people, I mean, I, I know how people today would be like, oh, dude, yeah, you know, this, 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 you know, it would happen. Uh, but so, yeah, I can only imagine it happening there. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And another thing that was interesting is you, you had the variety of people owning slaves and, and what they would let them do, you know, and the roles flipped. But it also kind of shed light that while a majority of them were not a, in a good situation, you know, there were still some decent human beings that, you know, acknowledged another human being that was subservient, right? So mm -hmm. it, it was interesting to see that different outline to it. Um, that even back then, when we think of it being more barbaric, there were still some decent human beings 
uh, in the in the flow of things. Oh sure, I don't see. I don't think. See, I think that's a part of history that 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 that, that I don't know is wrong or miswritten or. But I don't think we were as barbaric as people say or think. Uh, I just really British don't. colonialism. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. They're the ones that have brought it up because you read them. You know, you read their texts, you read their documents, and they are some extremely, and I mean, it, it seemingly much so seems that the average person then, or, or the average educated person then was much more highly intelligent than a lot of our so-called educated people now. Exactly, exactly. I think that in Greece, there was like seven schools that you had to attend before like you went to more advanced stuff or there's like seven total i forgot they're like the pillars of the the foundations of like wisdom Mm -hmm. and it's like rhetoric and all those different things i don't have them in front of me but i think they placed a more importance on how to think and why you think the way you do and things of that nature versus what to think like you do in modern society yeah yeah while while they liked their shiny things and they, they 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 weren't as consumer or, or as enamored by the consumerism as we are exactly yeah yeah which brings us into their ability to halt all business for an entire week <laughs> like, yeah <laughs> like i was i was thinking about that when i was typing up some of this stuff like what would happen if we brought saturnalia back today and just said everything shuts down for a week you know obviously we'd have to bring you know give you some notice so everyone can stock up on things they need and then just be like we're having all these social events we're having all these things here's how you can celebrate like i'm just thinking like what would happen to our society as a whole i think it would improve I think so too, you know, and I think this last year with COVID in reflection with how much time people have to spend at home, I think they're kind of, I think people, people more in general are kind of coming around to that. Like we could do that. Um, And if it was something that was done every every year, I mean, people are going to budget for it. People are going to, I mean, you find your way to work around it. So heck yeah. Yeah. And see, that's kind of what I'm thinking, you know, is, is you'd have to prepare for it like so the first time would have to be like a month out where like you have a countdown calendar like do you have all the bread and food you need do you have i don't know like you know it's like gas stations are open on christmas maybe you'd have you know short staff convenience stores and stuff like that but i think that is something we need like we need something that brings people together on a large scale uh yeah Absolutely. Especially now when we're all so separated, you know, <laughs> Yeah, you have to have these big events or something to bring people back together. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I think, uh, yeah, sure. Let's bring it back. I, I want to bring it back. It'll be a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, and what's interesting. And who, really works on christmas week anyways i mean it's not like any real work gets done during that week no (laughs) you you know it's just the employers are paying out money for because it's christmas week why Why not why not just pay them anyways like why don't we have a a state funded holiday (laughs) absolutely sure you know just make it built into to the packages that you get you know you get the saturnalia week pay boom you know (laughs) exactly (laughs) I mean, I, you know, at, at this point, not much would probably change, to be honest. I mean, and we're at a good point in history now to where we can just start saying, hey, let's just start taking Christmas week off. <laughs> well, well, yeah, I mean, I don't think we could, I don't think we could, uh, I don't think anything would happen if we did that. You know, I think it would be okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think we're, we're at a point in society where i mean when we say take a week off we there's things that have to happen there's security you know there's things that have to to take place that will take place in shifts so it's not like everything Uh, shuts down but uh, you know your state workers who just sit there piddling their thumbs because there's really nothing going on right now you know 
me, I, I take off the last two weeks of every year because there's nothing going on and it's, you know, time for me to, to relax and enjoy my time. Right. So, and that's a lot, a lot of people do, you know, yeah. like in my main job, people aren't shit. We've been slow for a week now. You know? Oh yeah. Yeah. Cause like people just aren't calling in or doing their things or having issues cause no one's working right now. Everyone's taking vacation. Yeah, you know, it's kind of, kind of the same being a Cambo practitioner. No one's coming for Cambo. They're all buying presents and stuff. So, you know, uh, so good kind of yeah, you know, and I mean, even the entheogen retreats slow down. So, you know, I, but after, but after the first of the year, stuff will start picking up again. You notice that's a, that's a sanitarian theme, right? Mm-hmm. The, yep. slow, the slowing down, the restriction of things. You know, which is interesting because in the Romans, the Romans would, they would give gifts, but they would give very minute gifts. They would give terracotta figures. They would give, you know, little wax tapered candles, you know, called cerri, cerri. And, you know, so they're giving gifts, but it's not about the numeric value. Right. It's not about how many, it's about the symbolism of mm-hmm. that item. Mm-hmm. right right what did that and and that's something i wanted to look into more was those little it's a figurines was there history on them were they you know characters and stories that they told amongst people that you know like our comic books today did they have you know what were they because you know because it would make sense to buy one that was say cheryl from such and such story because you connect with that person, you know, in that story. Yeah. From what I, when I was reading up on this and looking into it, what I've found is that the terracotta figures, the effigies, they were called singularia, uh, sing, yeah, singularia. And they were actually supposed to represent human sacrifice as they did in the old days, like during that mythic sanitarian rule. Um, so it was kind of a, a symbolism of what people <laughs> give up in order to have. Ah, okay. All right. And I thought that was pretty interesting because once again, that's, you know, I act surprised because they're like, oh my gosh, the, the correspondence and symbolism, but it makes sense, right? Right. But that is a Sagittarian theme too, because we have to restrict and sacrifice in order to endure or get ahead. Right. So the total opposite of what Christmas has become now. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Especially since Christmas, you know, a lot of it's not directly tied into Saturnalia. Like it didn't come from that. There's a lot of different traditions and, you know, things evolve. Mm-hmm. But some of the foundations come from this idea. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, well, yeah. The modern Christmas or yeah, it, it, it's so full of everything, but you can definitely see Saturnalia inside of it. You know, time of year. Um, uh, uh, you know, and, and but yeah, it's <laughs> absolutely. Sorry, I lost my train of thought there. No, it's good. It's good. Well, but that makes me think is like, okay, so we have Christmas where everyone gives gifts, and it's it's a period of travel. People travel different places, and usually it's a couple days, right? you know and i say that tongue in cheek because here i am a guy that's planning for the next three weekends we have to be somewhere for something right. um but you know for the most part you have a small section of time that you spend with your family in one area and then you move to the next um but with saturnalia it would be a week-long everyone come together event so that would almost be better that would almost be like a precursor to the the events right Mm -hmm. so one of i think that would be a better celebration where the week before the 17th through the 25th christmas being on the 25th we you just have parties like every night there's a some kind of social gathering somewhere um and obviously it's going to take multiple venues and multiple people like it's going to take a town a city but you just have events to bring people out and the key is the key is going to be money and the key is going to be time off for the success of this. 
because if people have to work the next day, they're not going to want to go to these events. And if people have to pay for them, but they're off all week, they're not going to want to pay for the events. Right. Right. (laughs) So there's this, there's this give back notion, right? Like, like I was saying, Saturn's this, you know, heavy handed father, but if you follow the rules, he's also benevolent in, in some ways. Right. So maybe that's it. Maybe we, we panter to the, the happier side of Saturn. Yeah. Yeah. That kind of reminded me of peyote actually. That's how peyote is, is yeah. <laughs> he's a heavy handed father. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What'd you think about, um, the, um, the Lord of misrule. The Lord of misrule, the per so like the, the uh, person elected king for, you know, in quotes for the evening, that's that. <laughs> yeah. I spent some time fantasizing about that too, going, wow, what was that like? Because that was usually a slave too, right? Well, it, it could be anybody. So what, okay. yeah, they put like coins and like small objects inside cakes and uh-huh. they're not the cakes like we think today, right? They're basically just little wheat bread types with a little bit of sweets to it um Mm. but um i don't even know if they really had a lot of sweets like they didn't have refined sugar so it had to have some kind of like honey or something but uh, yeah honey Mm. yeah so it's not quite what we think about like today with sweets but so whoever took a bite out of these these cakes if there was something in it that's who became the lord of misrule so it could really be anyone usually it's from what I've seen is usually it's somebody who's a um, lesser family member, not necessarily in the bad way, but like a younger or not such an apprised role. Right. That usually is ended up elected. Right. And they can ask anybody to do anything within the house. Yeah. Yeah. The, their, their job is to make as much mischief as possible. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> I was getting in trouble. Oh, geez. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine that would be, uh, yeah. You know, just knowing the different personality types, the ways that misrule could come about with, with a man. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. You know, and, and see one of the main, so they, they celebrated this in the individual locations in the streets, you know, in the towns around Rome, the Roman sections, um, and then in the villages and things like that. But one of the main places is the, the Temple of Saturn. And built in the fourth century AD, you know, it was replacing older temples before it. And this was like the main spot for the, the Saturnalia ritual. And they did like the pig sacrifices for the first day. And, you know, they actually had, interestingly enough, a statue with inside the the temple of saturn that they had bound and they would actually unbind the feet during the saturnalia rituals Mm -hmm. which you know it it makes sense it's like losing it's literally saturn losing the bindings and allowing for things to flow right interesting yeah you know so it's basically it's basically this big party that is to honor liberation, like to have fun with some freedoms and then give thanks to what they do have. I mean, that's what it comes down to is because you never know what's going to be next and you never know when, when Saturn is going to, to tighten those chains again. Right. Right. So yeah. Which is always a resounding theme with, every holiday in this season is be thankful for what you have. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And what's interesting, I just saw this. um, This is, I haven't had a chance to really research this, but it looks like it has some ties to the Greek um, festival of Kronia. And that makes sense because Kronos is Saturn as well. You know, God of father of time and all that. So that is an avenue that I should have found and researched, but I haven't. Yeah. Interesting. So how do we celebrate 
Saturnalia. It's a good we question. Party, we party hard, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's that's something that I was trying to research and I was trying to find out is like what Okay, so if you want to practice Saturnalia on your own, if you want to I'm going to make a post tomorrow about it, but um ushering in the day, but um what if you do? What, like, what, what do you actually do as an individual? It's hard because, you know, it's all about libations, freedoms, and enjoying yourself in a social setting. And in 2020, that's very hard to do. But in, in general, besides casting a big party or hosting the big party, there's, there's not a set in stone method. And this is where that I was saying earlier, where that history kind of fells through, where no one really documents rites and rituals very well for this right they might be too drunk <laughs> what happened last um, night i don't know it's a, among other things i'm sure <laughs> yeah yeah exactly exactly they were they were taking some of the um the medicine medicine um plants yeah i don't know they had cannabis back then they did they did yeah, they would have had some good kush, actually. <laughs> yeah, they had that, and then they had all your your shrooms, and then they had your other neurotoxins, like yeah. your wolfsbane and nightshade and all that that they were using in their alcohols. Yeah, yeah. I'm, well, actually, I'm curious now what other psychedelic plants would be from that other, from that area. <laughs> well, red, red cap. Yeah, yeah. See, which is interesting because red cap is what kind of well red cap i guess would be well i don't know if they had red cap there or not i think that was more of an england type area germanic i don't know i'd have to research that more i imagine a fungus is anywhere on earth right at this point yeah yeah, that pretty well grows i mean as long as it's got a decent amount of moisture it's gonna grow yeah and if it doesn't usually the spore just sits there dormant until it does so yeah that's kind of one of those things i would think no matter where you're at if you have the right conditions it's going to grow yeah so you're going to have all you're going to have those and then what was interesting you know i think we talked about this a little bit once before is in the book the immortality key they talk about how like in elusius elusius and like the oracle delphi how they they made the these uh, wines and beers that were hallucinogenic, but also that like the natural vapors and gases in that area were also um, mind altering as well. So well, yeah, that, the Oracle in particular, she from what I remember, she particularly hunt, would 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 go into that cave or into her cave where this gas is being emitted just for this. Exactly, um, which would definitely would want to watch her with that because I mean. Holy cow, how would you know? I mean, if you're just sitting there breathing the gas, I mean, you could sit in there forever. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, until you're forever. Right, and right, he, right. Which I wonder how many people, you know, how many oracles they went through, but that's a little bit of a side conversation. Right. But, um, okay, back to what I was thinking. So, yeah, you have, like, red cap and stuff like that that's hallucinogen. But then you also have, um, like, your pine cones and stuff like that. That came from your, like, Germanic areas in your, uh, right. that part of the world. And that ties into, like, this whole Christmas theme as well, right? Mm-hmm. Because there's some theories that through these hallucinogenic trips, we we end up with Santa Claus myth and legend. Uh, yeah interesting you know, yeah, yeah it really is i think the whole narrative of santa claus is very very interesting because you know you have saint nicholas through the the christian faith and who was an actual individual who gave gifts and things of that nature and mm-hmm. then you have this deity of saint nick or santa claus that people who were tripping came up with Saul or interacted with they thought right so that I don't know it's interesting you know I gotta I gotta make sure my my kids aren't around because I don't want to spoil the surprise for them but um 
you know, Santa Claus in itself, I think is an interesting thing because I'm waiting for the day when my boy's like, is, is, Santa's not real and he's all upset. And then I can give him this nice philosophical idea of no, Santa is real. Do you, yeah. did you believe in him? And do you think of him? And he's like, yeah. And like, then he's real. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Cause yeah. you, you created that egregore and millions and millions of children and people create that egregore every year. So just because he's not coming down your chimney doesn't mean he's not real. It's the spirit that's real. Right. Right. It's the belief in it. You know, I, absolutely. Now, see, I thought the uh, tradition of, of, uh, of the Santa Claus of that, of, of him traveling and doing that at night came from Odin, the all father, because he did that. No, I mean, yeah, that can very well be possible too. Yeah. Like there's, yeah, no, see, there's never one I mean, set source, right? Well, you know, there's so many different, I, I think I've heard about a dozen different Santa Claus stories and myths on where he actually comes from. And, 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 and it's like, who, who knows where he comes from? It's, he's here. So there's something to him. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And, and that's the thing that I find so fascinating with this is it doesn't matter. It truly doesn't matter at the end of the day, if you physically can interact with these spirits or gods because as long as people hold them in belief or hold them in some type of prayer, the they exist. Thought and created it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whose God is better than other gods. Like you hold to your belief and you be good buddy. <laughs> right. Right. If that's your path and that is what's getting you down, then then stay on your path, brother. <laughs> I like to think that there's a yearly banquet where all the gods get together and just laugh <laughs> at us humans. <laughs> you know, you know, that's probably closer to the truth than many would ever like to admit. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sure. I'm sure. Like some of my, I don't know. I don't know if I, uh, I worry about what I say because I don't know what I should say because I don't know if I have approval to say it, but um, some of my interactions with some of these spirits that it seems to be very true. Like, yeah. Well, yeah. It, yeah. Especially if you've been down the psilocybin road where, 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 where it's just a fun experience anyways. Yeah. You see the humor side of all the spirits during the uh, journey. It, it, yeah. Yeah. And that's why I said they like to have just as much fun as we do exactly and and that leads you into like a debate or a conversation or thought of do do gods and spirits have personalities and then what is a personality and how does that define you know that oh man that that just gets into confusing this but to make it simple i believe they do oh yeah i, I you know there's a reason why we have archetypes right i mean you can follow the the 12 or 13 different archetypes right down into our uh, actually into bed you know into our you know individuals you can do it through astrology you can do it through numerology you can do it through mm -hmm. myth or through through the greeks the the norse and and the, the the romans and so i think they're always telling us what their personality is right exactly and i think that is what people should focus on so those out there listening you know, when people start invoking different spirits, working with them, evoking them, whatever you prefer, you'll feel those out, feel those energies, <laughs> feel those personalities and archetypes, because that is how you know who you're dealing with when you're starting out. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. That's how you know how to deal with them, who you're dealing with, and what you're dealing with. Yep. And, and that's where, you know, meditation and, and feeling out the energies and all that stuff come in into play mm. without trying to sound so new agey <laughs> rub my crystals and meditate <laughs> yeah yeah you know <laughs> yeah yeah the new age thing it's so 80s but it's so true it's you know it's like everything that was happening with the new age back in the 80s and early 90s it's still hold, holding true and happening it's just they hate hearing the word new age because uh -huh. it's a negative connotation of ooh you're a whack job you're a weirdo exactly <laughs> and and then you have the the people 
I don't want to discredit anyone in their path or their belief. Everyone has their, their journey and their road to walk. Mm -hmm. But some of the ways that people portray this stuff on like TikTok and YouTube and stuff. And it's just like love and light to a degree where there is nothing else. And you're so optimistic about everything. And the crystal is literally going to manifest and turn away all mm -hmm. evil. And it's just like, I get what you're getting at. You're really going for the, the law of attraction thing here, but <laughs> I really don't think that's how it truly works in the end. <laughs> like we all work on a fight frequencies. I mean, you're, I hope, I hope I'm not offending you or anything. No, no, no not <laughs> at all. It, it, it's, you know, you've got to have an equilibrium and yeah, there are those that are disgustingly way over into the love and light to where they never leave it. And, you know, and, and it does get kind of like, oh, you know, <laughs> like, okay, just stay over there. Cause I need some not love time right now. <laughs> exactly. And that's where, you know, this is ironic because a lot of the things we're hitting on, if you really think about it, there's a lot of Saturn vibes underneath of it. Um, mm -hmm. Cause you need that. And that's where Saturn comes in because Saturn is that other side of things. He's the cold, dark truth and the dark night of the soul. You have to have that to be balanced, to be harmonious and to have that constrained equilibrium. Well, yeah, you know, absolutely. Uh, yeah, and that brought to, to thought as you were saying that, you know, the cold night of, or, or the cold dark of the soul, you know, doing your shadow work, you know, that's kind of those people that are way over in that disgustingly light, you know, that's where I almost have to wonder if a lot of time it's not a fake facade because it's like you, you, everyone's got work to do, <laughs> you know, you can't be that happy all the time. <laughs> no, I think it's. I, I can't speak for everything and I don't want to step on anyone's toes, but I think it's more of a psychological, like you're trying, you're not consciously doing it, but you're trying to compensate to see if you can pull yourself to actually be in that frame state, right? Like you're forcing yourself to be there mentally all the time. And then you're convincing yourself that this is where I should be all the time. So you're trying to make yourself stay there, right. like, you know, right. Right. Instead of just addressing the trauma that's making you second guess that in the first place. <laughs> yeah. You know, but for some, that's a lot harder to do than, than just forcing themselves into that happy space going, Nope, I'm going to be happy. I'm going to be happy. Everyone. Just the pro the uh, trauma. You're going to be happy. Yeah. Everyone needs to work with Saturn. Like they do. And it's a scary, scary, you know, contact. I, I've avoided him for a long time, even though I have a strong Saturn in my chart and like my life is surrounded nothing besides Sanitarian vibes, right? Two steps forward, two steps back, you know? Oh, oh, gee. oh my gosh. Sometimes it's two steps forward, three steps back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and so this year I, I decided that I'm going to start working with them because I got a very very well done geomancy reading never had one done before well, tell uh, me about that. yeah so this guy um sam block is the guy who does it um i i'd have to look up his url but um he was doing a discount and on etsy he does geomancy readings and it was like 35 dollars. i'm like hell i spend more than that on some other things let's see what happens right. um the dude did an amazing job there was like a six page printed out pages off the computer 12 font like of my year ahead and areas to focus on and like you know what i need to work on and looking through that this year it was like a guidebook it was like if i didn't have this this year would probably have been a lot harder than it was wow. it was freaking crazy how accurate and one of the things in there was you have to work with your saturn you have lessons you need to learn that Saturn will teach you, but you're not listening to him is pretty much what it said. Right. So I started doing, you know, veneration of Saturn and, and invocations and meditations with that. Uh -huh. And, you know, you learn hard truths through that. You learn that you sometimes, I don't, the royal you speaking of me or whoever, you know, that you can be a fuck up. 
you know, like right. you caused this yourself now tighten your belt and fix it. And here's how you fix it type scenarios. Yep. 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 Yeah. Address your shit. Be a man, address your shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And that's kind of what Saturn is, is, you know, you made your bed, now lie in it and let's figure out how to fix it. So what is geomancy you said? Uh, yeah. So what's the alchemy to that? I've um, never heard, heard that term before. Man, I, I'm, not, I'm not. Oh, I got some oh, feedback. Some feedback. Mm. Hold on. Don't know what that was about. I'm not really versed into it enough where I can speak from an authoritarian stance of how it works. But it comes down to like casting, casting stones and dealing with like geographical like energy type work like there's a chart that you you make out you you draw out or make out or forget exactly how he does it and then you you drop these stones and kind of how they lie depends on what um what everything means right i'm not so versed in it at all that he has with you is there any interaction that he has with you or or does that all happen on the other end no well, see that's that's interesting because you have to give him some personal information so he can tap into you, right? So like your name, date of birth, stuff like that. Right. The very first paragraph was a long paragraph explaining how it was really hard to tap into me and that he, my energies were really like secluded and refined off. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I laugh because I do protection spells. I do yeah. barriers. I do like things like that. And um, after I release this, I'm probably have to do some more. But, well, yeah, basically that's that's you have, you have to tap into the energy, and I right. make it very hard to tap into my energy because, well, I do these shows with people, and I have my own workings, and who knows what astral nasties are out there trying to get me or people I care about. So, I yeah. I put up barriers and only let in what I want. So, I. I messaged him back. I was like, Oh, okay. Well, that was probably my barriers and stuff that you put in. And he's like, Oh, okay. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so that was like some kind of validation that, Hey, it actually works. <laughs> oh, yeah. yep. yep. It does. It does. It's, it's bittersweet when you get really good validations like that. Yeah. It yeah, is. So, all right. Well, that's it. So it's mostly energetic. It's on an, so, so, so it's on an energetic level and he's using the stones as tools. Yeah. Or, okay. Okay. I see. Let's take okay. a look here. Um, so the, the technical dictionary term is the art of placing or arranging buildings or other sites auspiciously. No, that's not the right one. Number two, divination from configurations seen in a handful of earth thrown or ground, um, events uh, interpreting lines and textures on the ground okay. so yeah basically like you're casting lots right through, through different stuff it's it's beyond it's not beyond me i could obtain it if i want to but it's not something i've ever pursued right to to learn well yeah i mean either it's just interesting i just wanted to know what his modality you know or or uh uh, uh, uh he was how or what the alchemy was really to it is, is how is it working? You know, um, but all right, that makes sense. That's interesting. Okay, cool. Yeah, it, he, it, it was amazing. Um, yeah, he doesn't have it on sale this year. It doesn't look like it's $44 for a divination reading. I might have to get it though, because mm -hmm. it was so nice last year or this past year. It sounds like something I'm like, it's a, Polyphanes on Etsy is, yeah, for all you out there listening, it's Polyphanes on Etsy, P-O-L-Y-P-H-A-N-E-S. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's, that's me. I just messaged you with it. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So it's interesting though. So working with Saturn, I'm going to have to do something for him during this next week as well. You know, I can't do a full seven days because I'm going to be out and about on some of the weekend. So I can't like do everything every day. And I don't want to commit to that because he is one of those people. If you commit, you follow through. And if you don't follow through, then it sucks to be you. 
Right. Yeah. Yeah. So was that a part of their thing? Did they have a daily ritual that some would do or that? I couldn't find any. Um, like that's, that's what was kind of besides the temple worship and the, the sacrificing the pig, I couldn't find any daily practices that people in Roman society did. And it kind of lack of documentation, I guess, or, or lack of me finding it. Um, but that's what I was looking for. Cause now I'm going to have to form my own and <laughs> we're going to talk about that because you know, we're dealing with Saturn, a deity, a planetary energy. Um, you know, Saturn, if you look in the Kabbalah, he relates Kabbalah and Christianity. He relates to Cassiel. And he also relates, if you are into planetary magic, Eretron. And he's a spirit. Eretron is a spirit under Cassiel. So, once the again. Castiel? Cassiel. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's an archangel Cassiel. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, just like the guy from supernatural, but right. <laughs> a lot more strict. <laughs> well, his Castiel, right? He's, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's a, he, yeah. It's yeah. A, he was an angel. It's a Castiel. No, well, there's no T in, in this one. Oh, so, no T. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So Cassiel. that's so maybe, maybe it's different. Okay. Yeah, I think it's a little bit different. Um, yeah, not to be confused with Castiel. Yeah, so I mean, I'm sure there's probably you could probably draw the correlations, and they probably had their their Hollywood ad lib. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because there are some correlations to that. But um, so yeah, Castiel would be the archangel um, involved with the Satarian energies. Now this is where it gets confusing because you have planetary energies you have set you have gods called saturn or chronos you have cassiel the arc energy the arc angel and then you have eratron a planetary or olympic spirit of the satarian energy so when you throw all that around people often ask like how does that correlate together like do i talk to saturn or do i talk to cassiel or do i talk to chronos or do you know how does that tie together so i asked this i asked this once when i was in one of my sessions and basically what i got was there's a hierarchy and when you deal with things like saturn and cassiel they are virtually the same and that's kind of in a nutshell what it is about like you can call saturn you can call uh, cassiel you can call chronos you're you're getting the same energy they're the same conscious right right evolved differently but by different names by who they were speaking to at the time exactly and then now when you start dealing with eratron eratron um god i hope i'm pronouncing that right now that i said it a couple times um you you're dealing with subversive energy that's not subversive you're dealing with more refined energy because they have the governors the legions the things underneath them that help move their energy help move their agendas and, and do what their purpose of being in existence is for so it's a fraction of what cassiel or whoever would be does that make sense um i'm trying to visualize it so it, it's kind of like um it's kind of like owning a company you're you're the you're the owner of um, widget company A. Okay, they produce widgets. Mm -hmm. And you have the power to run everything within that company and you can do anything within those walls and bounds of that you have that responsibility and energy built up in. From sweeping the floor to making the widgets to you know paying the bills to taking all the money and run. Whatever right. you're in charge of with that widget company. Now, right. you know, some people call you boss. Some people call you Mike. Some people call you Michael. Some people call you sir. Right. You are all that one energy. Sure. And then your general manager, his name's Eratron. Uh, he, he has 
the ability to manage your employees directly, manage the manufacturing, managing the ordering, managing the expenses, but he doesn't have access to take the money and run. He doesn't have access to shut the doors down. He, you know what I mean? So he's kind of an underling and it's interesting. You can't put words to it. And that's the best way I can describe it as a human. You know, it's not necessarily that cut and dry, but you have to do these pathways up into this, this energy because working working with Cassiel directly, he's going to be like, what do you want? I have bigger things to deal with. I have, I have um, worlds to destroy and things to balance. And you're wanting me to help you with your debt. I don't care. Talk to my buddy, (laughs) Aerodron. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. No, I've got other things to do here. So, uh, okay, human, (laughs) go with it. And and they will, they'll, they'll, If you if you don't build that relationship with them, that's the attitude you get. Mm-hmm. Like, like why why are you bothering me? Like you you petty human. I have bigger things to deal with, and you want to talk about your love life. Like you're only going to be alive for another seventy years. I I don't care. <laughs> like it's I don't the know. Same way dealing with them here, dealing with Aya and and uh, Bufo, they're the same way. If you go back too soon, they will kick you out. They'll be like, "What are you here for?" you know <laughs> yeah I told you to go to work you didn't do it so we don't want to see you and it's like okay all right <laughs> yeah i've i've had a a angle angel slap down once like you know i went back one too many times asking the same question peandering with the same like how do i get this done and literally it was shut up like paraphrasing it was like shut yeah. up you know the answer we've told you right. the answer go meditate bye Right. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, oh, okay. I'll, I'll I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's usually when you have to sit back and go, okay, my ego's stepping in the way here again. <laughs> You're yep. right. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Always. It's always the ego going, no, no, no. I don't want to do that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So this Saturnalia, I'm going to work with Saturn more. I'm going to get him a, I need to go get a couple. Oh, I don't have it. Oh my God. I don't have a uh, black tapered candles. Like I, I like the little um, chime candles because they burn in about two hours and they're just perfect. The large tapered candles, they just take forever and I just don't like them. <laughs> but um, so I'm going to, I'm going to get some black tapered candles and set them up a little, his little altar and um, just kind of give some offerings to him. Um, he, you know, what's interesting is what kind of offerings would you give him? Exactly. So the crystals and stuff, you have pretty much anything black. So like obsidian, um, yeah. What is the other one? The real fragile glass that, um, it's obsidian, but there's another one. It's escaping my mind right now. Black terminal, um, okay. and something else so you, you put some of these black crystals up on the altars and then he loves like pungent smells so um if you yeah there's just an anubis incense that um aaron leach sells that smells fucking horrible <laughs> but um it, it works really well and that makes sense though because he is you know a ultimately a god of endings and decay and death right so right. that's his thing so there's a couple pungent in, uh, pungent incenses i have it's a anubis mix that i'm gonna you know kind of burn and give to him and i haven't decided on food byproducts yet so i haven't had go ahead i'm thinking grapes like purple grapes, red and purple grapes. Um, well, that, I don't know, but let me look that up. But um, I wonder about that because I worry about food offerings because there's this whole lore that giving food offerings kind of gives them, um, kind of builds this connection where you always have to do that. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to start that. And I... I don't give food offerings too often. Right. Um, but yeah. 
do it. So, but it, I mean, it's a special occasion. Like, cause I know some practitioners, you know, during their like Michaelmas and stuff, they'll have the loaves of bread out for him and roses and, you know, all these things. So I don't know. Not a hundred percent sure. Um, let's see here. I usually add food to the Aya ceremonies. Um, it, yeah. Yeah. It seemed like once I did that and actually I, I got that from another mentor, but, um, uh, but once I did that, it just seemed to smooth everything out. Like, <laughs> you know, uh, it's like, don't, you know, it's like the old adage, don't, don't go talk to a hungry woman because you won't like what she has to say, you know, <laughs> that, you know, that's true. So, you know, that's true. And maybe I need to experiment with this a little bit. <laughs> You're you know? right. Yeah. So I'll have to decide, you know, cause he, tobacco and stuff like that works wonders, you know, oh, yeah. Th that's a, a great offering for, for Saturn. Um, do you have any sacred tobaccos that you find or that you get, or do you just use like a normal store-bought tobacco? Yes, the tobaccos from a store and stuff. I don't have any sacred tobaccos and stuff. I'm oh. not. I, I don't have that. I don't. Ha I'm not sure quite where to get that around here, and I haven't been good at ordering online. Yeah, I've been thinking about making an order from Brazil for some mapacho. That's a really good sacred tobacco. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. Yeah. So, I mean, you're looking at, like, incense. Is anything that has kind of um, a, a mortality vibe to it? You know, like your mandrakes and your um, drag, or, uh, blah, 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 not, dragon wart and stuff like that is going to have an incense correlation to Saturn. So, burning some of that saying some invocations with him and stuff and then and giving him an offering, you know, maybe of some kind of wine or, or liquor. Um, that would be kind of the process that I'm looking at. I, I like the wine idea. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. It fits into the Saturnalian vibe, right? <laughs> that, does, that does that, that, that I think I would probably surpass the food in favor of wine. Oh yeah. 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 I'll try that out. You know, cause yeah. this is, this is, you know, it's it's weird to say it's one big experiment, but really it is. Is it's kind of like buying gifts for people. It's an experiment. Like you don't until you know the person really well, you don't really know what they're gonna want. You're not gonna know what they like. So it takes time and to build that relationship. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's gonna be my Saturnalia things. Um, That'll be I, interesting. I'm uh, interested to hear how that runs for you and and uh, what and how things go for you over, over the next month, three months, six months, and how that works out. Yeah. That'll be interesting. Yeah, most certainly. Um, not to give away too much personal information to the audience out there, but you know, I have some high hopes for 2021, which is kind of funny to say out of coming out of 2020 uh, <laughs> when everyone started with high hopes. Um, but right. the way the astrology is working within my natal chart and going into a 10th house perfection year and some of the things I'm into, like, I'm, if anything goes wrong, I'm just going to be like, well, I'm done for life then because, I mean, this is like going to be one of the best charts of my life. <laughs> um, not necessarily, but it, I, I do see a lot of hope for next year based on the, the alignments and everything, especially with um, Saturn and Jupiter moving into Aquarius Right. And, um, you know, cause, cause Saturn and Jupiter are moving into Aquarius where we're have like innovation and new ideas and thoughts and movements. Right. And yeah. And that's going to be really indicative of 2021. I feel like, and 2020 really being to bring it back to really being that year of Saturn of just, <clears throat> of just that constriction of, okay. <laughs> you know yeah, exactly. Yeah. So for the next three years, we should be seeing a lot of interesting disruption of ideas and thoughts and new ways of of evolving and communicating, which kind of some of the stuff I'm working on is is with that. Mm -hmm. So I don't uh, know. So I've, 
you know, I'm feeling pretty positive about 2021 as well. I mean, to be honest, I mean, you know, and I think a lot of people are, you know, it's just how quickly can we get through this pandemic thing and get to work? You know, that's really the only thing that's holding everybody up is this crazy pandemic. You know, you know my mind and people are going to probably think less of me for saying this out there. Some of you are, but I'm over it already. Mm-hmm. Like I don't, me I don't too. wear my I don't wear my mask to half the places I used to anymore. It's like fuck it, right? Like I people around me have gotten it. Some have gotten pretty sick, some have gotten over it, you know, you know, some uh I second handedly I've known people who have died, but you know, and some people have gotten it multiple times. It, know, exactly. It, so it's like uh, yeah, you know, and I'm I'm right with you. I do not wear my mask unless you know, I absolutely have to, you know, I keep one in the car, but unless I can't enter without the mask on, then I'm not wearing it. Exactly. And that's how I looked at it. Like I did my part in the beginning, nothing changed. I see people who wear a mask. I I have a relative who got on to me very badly about not like being, you know, pro-choice for masks, like do your thing find your safety tolerance and do that. Right. Like I'm not even saying don't wear them. I'm just saying, Hey, you do, you let people live their lives. And she got on to me about that. And I'm like, whatever, like let people live. You want to wear a mask and wear it. And she's like, I will. And they they all got it. They all got COVID. I'm like, yeah. Okay. Okay. But see, here's the thing is that to me, it's like, you know, and during this whole thing, the one thing that no one's talking about is, is increase your immune system. Do everything you can to keep your yeah. immune system as healthy as possible. Yet everything they're telling us to do is doing everything it can to suppress our yes. immune system. Yeah. So, so I'm taking the opposite logic. I'm like, no, 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 no. The best thing that I can do is keep my immune system as mm-hmm. strong as possible. And you know, what does that entail? That's Cambo every month. I eat right. I try to keep myself happy. Yeah. I, you know, do the things I need to do to keep it good, you know? Yeah. And that I think is our biggest failure is that everyone's taking the lazy way out of wearing this mask and then taking a vaccine. Yeah. No, no, no. no. No, They play on the pharmaceuticals. They play on the pharmaceuticals. The pharmaceuticals will save me. But (laughs) really, I, I had this conversation with my significant other. Um, because she started like getting some bad allergies or feeling bad and she's like oh my god I don't I think I have COVID I'm like no you don't I can tell like here and so I gave her like a handful of vitamins like concoction that I put together and like take these you'll be fine and the next day she's as bright and happy as ever and like she's like I don't understand why things like this you know she's like just pumping stuff into your body. I'm like, no, you are giving your body nutrients so it can do what it's supposed to do is what you're doing right you know it it will take care of itself if you give it what it needs <laughs> that's absolutely right you, it, the the body will fight everything you can you know you can 100% heal yourself of everything if you just keep your body straight you know yep and if you're not doing it it just means you know it may or may not be laziness it could be that you know like in my case i i still smoke that's my one thing but I enjoy smoking. So until I find something else that takes that edge or the need, I'll probably end up smoking, (laughs) you know? You know what I I think? I think that this is, this is, I just love it because this is an also sedentarian lesson here. Um, I think people are overwhelmed with how much information and data is out there and what they're being told to do. And I'm not just talking COVID, I'm talking everything. And they get overwhelmed, so they choose not to choose. And as Journey says, when you choose not to choose, you still made a choice. So yeah. you have a you have a problem there because yeah. right. You can't bitch about what's gonna happen to you if you're not choosing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you know I, I want to play like the benevolent one and say that I feel for these people because they're overwhelmed with all that is required to learn and to do in order to maintain healthiness when you're surrounded by a world that says, go, go, go. You don't need sleep. Wake up at 5 a.m. Go to bed at midnight. Um, you're in a rush. So eat McDonald's three times a day. Kids got to go here, here and here. You know, I think 
the world in a way influences the minds of the people into making these unhealthy choices, unhealthy choices. I, we have, this society has definitely created it. Absolutely. But we fed right into it. Right. Well, you it's know. only given us what we want. Right. Absolutely. So, you know, but yeah, it, it's time now to where we need to second guess everything and start thinking about everything again and being like, ah, maybe we don't want to do that no more. <laughs> Why we need to bring back Saturnalia and have yeah. a week off. Yeah. Yeah. Reflection <laughs> and party. You know, that would be interesting though, because we, we live in a very monocentric theology oh you know what i mean like in our area like it's it's very oh, we are a very um yeah, yeah. everyone it, knows what we're saying, trying to say it's very <laughs> fundamentalist christian area yeah so we would have like if we said bring back saturnalia the instantly i can just see right now in the newspapers local group know. tries to bring yeah local group tries to bring back worshiping satan that's exactly <laughs> what it would be you know and it'd be headed up by the baptists and the catholics <laughs> oh yeah but i would love to like i want to open there's two things i want to open i want to open up an occult museum and i want to open up a um a like a a new age shop like where you can buy all your incenses and stuff you need because locally like it's hard to find i have to drive to you know 45 minutes away or i have to order it online oh, we, should so. talk. we should talk more because because uh, i have some ideas with that too but i mean not enough to fill up a whole place to warrant getting a place you know what i'm saying yeah i'm gonna start small with with the etsy and then the, the website mm -hmm you know, just out of the basement shipping and stuff like that. And then if it turns profitable, look into expanding. Yeah. Um, that's, there, there you go, everybody. That's one of my ideas for 2021. Um, <laughs> so well, yeah, see, I've been thinking the same thing, trying to get medicines in because it's hard. You know, it's, the, this thing is growing, you know, uh, uh, it's growing by, by leaps and bounds. I, don't know what you would call this new spirituality that's happening amongst the world but you know it's hard to get the medicines and it's hard to get the tools other than what's the new agey market stuff and a lot of that's fake here so oh god <laughs> you know it's horrible so yeah i've been actually thinking about doing the same thing and just or ordering bulk like i said actually mapacho you can order bulk bring it up package it and push it out the door you know to people that need it exactly exactly you know things like that you know i want i want to bring that locally one of the things i really want to do is curate a good occult museum and it doesn't necessarily have to have 100 That's like 100 percent authentic um relics like from the locations or used by xyz but right. i want to use some of my crafting skills to like make the authentic relic um, mm -hmm. you know, re reproduce it and obviously disclose that it's reproduced. You know, I'm not going to try to fool anybody. I'm not about that, right. but just to show demo it and explain that this is how it was used. And like, you can walk through this antique building and just see all these different rooms from different eras. So like you'd have a, a room for Saturn or you'd have a room for Crowley or you'd have a room for Wicca or Golden Dawn and like have just kind of things laid out. To demystify the mysticism exactly like when you really get into this it's like oh it's not that scary <laughs> it's really not and it's all about energy and it's like once you can you know un un understand it that it's just a positive negative just like electricity what do we call energy right <laughs> yeah so, you, you know once you get the basis concept of that it's like oh there's nothing scary about anything it's what that person chose to do with it is what exactly. makes it scary you know exactly i don't i don't know if you've seen that video or not but i posted a video where i bought a piece of um crowley's old uh, house on um loch ness really uh, video, but i hadn't actually played it yet see, that's really cool yeah it's, go back it's, and watch it because i saw it and saw it and made note but then i just have never made chance but it, it's just me me note. talking about it and ordering the piece 
and that's all it really was but it was just fascinating because somebody posted on reddit i'm like i'm buying it like i just knew i was like i don't have to buy a piece it was like 45 dollars um home? yeah so the boleskin house where he um did his abermelon ritual well he did most of the abermelon ritual uh-huh. um he owned that in loch ness and then jimmy page bought it and someone else bought it and you know it's just kind of sat well, it burned down twice. Well, it partially burned once in 2015, 2009, 2015. And then it burned good in 2018. So what kind of protections have you put up around that? <laughs> right? <laughs> um, well, I mean, we'll be like, yeah, this is cool to own, but gosh, uh, I don't know if I want to bring it in my home. <laughs> we'll, we'll get into that in just a second. So I haven't got it yet. Um, it's not going to be here till February, but you know, it's I did it partially because it'd be cool because I was like, oh, I'll put this in the occult museum when I make this. Right. But also also because, you know, buying it went to the nonprofit to help rebuild the, the um house, rebuild the Leskin house. Yeah. And then when I was reading through it, it looks like they're trying to actually build up the area and maybe, maybe this is totally speculative based on what I read. Um, have some boarding houses or boarding rooms for like tourists or something, which would be freaking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um but back to your protection thing you can buy ash from the house like ashes mm-hmm. right okay oh. um instantly when i read that i'm like "Ooh, i want that and then like something was like no you don't want that you you yeah, don't if there's any particle that's not ash you've got that energy right there <laughs> well yeah i mean that's all destructive energy um it's uh-huh. kind of like graveyard dirt in a way uh huh. Um. So I'm like, no, I'll just I'll just get the slate piece. So it's like a piece of rock, like the slate tiling or roof or something. And um, so I ordered that. This hasn't come in yet. And then I saw another guy on on Reddit post. It was either on Reddit or it was on my YouTube. I think it was on YouTube under the thing. Um. He posted. He's like, yeah, I bought uh, I bought a piece of the slate and the ash. And then he tells me the story about how he has to go bury the ash somewhere because his house started having like weird poltergeist activity when he brought it in. And I'm like, Ooh, I'm so glad I didn't buy the ash. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. As soon as you said ash, I got an immediate no. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Stay away from that. The slate, so much the slate, uh, you know, but yeah. Yeah. The ash, no. Yeah. He actually, okay. So it's on, it was on, um, the youtube page he posted down below so if you get anybody listening you can go over there and check that out and read it it's kind of interesting mm-hmm. yeah yeah which is yeah that's interesting but i can't wait to get that that'll be fun that'll be interesting i probably still probably put it in its own little bubble <laughs> oh yeah most <laughs> certainly you're in this little bubble right here <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of what I plan on doing. Um, I have an idea. Well, for experimentation purposes, at first I won't, but I have an idea of what I'm going to encase it in. <laughs> like, I'll have a, um, some sigils and, and some protections. I'll invoke some angels to, to bless the box and stuff. And I want it to have a glass box so you can actually see it. So it's like an actual oh, display sure. case. Right. So I'm making that for it. <laughs> Sorry, hold on. You're good sales call there we go apple everything connects on apple (laughs) (laughs) sorry (laughs) no you're good um but yeah no the other thing i collect is uh, not one-off books but there's been a revival in like really fine print occult books Uh like um so you have these very prominent predominant people like writing these new books um, about this magic and their practices and what they do and like these new grimoires and stuff in places like Scarlet Imprint and things like that will bind them in limited press in like some beautiful bindings and stuff. So wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you get them before, like in the pre-order and stuff, you can get them for a reasonable price and by reasonable, a couple hundred dollars. Right. And but um, the one that I missed out on, it was like $350, was the an elegant book of 
of the art of magic in the fine edition had like miniature crystal skulls in the maybe it's not crystals but maybe it's silver wow. um but little crystal skulls in the imprint and stuff um of the book cover and it's going for like eight hundred dollars now okay. yeah so so that's been kind of my another collection of mine that i try to do and kickstarters i try to support people like when they make new books and decks and stuff right yeah but uh interesting. Try to, yeah it's it is very very interesting so what about you any any plans of any experimentation or thoughts on your saturnalia uh me just trying to finish out the year and just as easy as possible at this point <laughs> uh, really uh and just kind of gearing up for next year because uh for me about the end of january is when things started to kick off and 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 yeah it's just going to get busier and busier and busier so um right now i'm just reveling in the fact that i don't have much i'm not responsible for much aside for just keeping myself alive <laughs> that's nice yeah that's nice yeah i'm trying to to get into that vibe too <laughs> And I mean, it's a perfect time for it. Mm-hmm. Like that, that would be, I think that would be a good thing. If you want, if anybody wants this kind of a simple, simple little ritual for Saturnalia is I would do the wine. Like you were saying like that, that's a good idea. Just get a little glass of wine, put it down with a little black candle and light it and just say, you know, thank you for keeping me in bounds or thank you for, you know, uh, assistance throughout the year as we come to a close because he's all about close. He's the ending. Mm -hmm. So now would be a perfect time just to give a little thanks and, you know, do a prayer and then just have fun, have fun during this time. Yeah. uh, That's what I would do. (laughs) That seems to be the overwhelming is, is, is give thanks, be thankful for what you have and, but enjoy it. You know, don't take things too seriously. Don't, don't be the stick in the mud, you know? Exactly. Exactly. All right. This is another good talk. This was another good hour and 20 minutes just about. Yeah. Yeah. I, I enjoy it. I enjoy starting off with a concept and then just letting it play out and uh, seeing where it goes. It's a ton of fun. I do. I may not have the most knowledge on things, but it's just fun to talk about it and just apply my concepts to it. And that's how I learn mostly anyways, is just by hearing and, and, and then going, well, this is how I under, oh, okay. I see what they're doing there. You know? Yes. No one's a hundred percent right. You know, and everything, everything can be debated. So just right. put it out there. Let's, you know, that's my thought about it. I'm sure, I'm sure I'll listen to this 10 years down the road. No, I probably won't. I don't like listening to my own self, but you know, somebody might call me out on something I say and hell, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Right. Like I'll stand corrected. That's the joy of being a scholar. You got to learn. Well, that's how we become wiser. You know, Mm -hmm. it's only truth until we know the better truth. So, you know, don't be mad at me if I'm wrong, help correct me. So I see the better truth. Amen to that. And it still has not shipped yet. Okay. (laughs) Uh, yeah. It might take a while. <laughs> it, it, yeah, I mean, the when I bought it, experience a few problems. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Is it coming overseas or is it coming yeah, by it, here? It's so, well. It, it probably will be coming overseas. Okay. So yeah, that boat might have a few engine problems. <laughs> it might sink. Um, <laughs> right. Might be involved in a wreck or two on the way here. <laughs> fr- Friday, January twenty second through February fourth. That's when the estimated date of delivery is. And I knew this before I ordered it too. So it's not like a surprise to me. Like, right. yeah, I still check it every day just to see. Oh, you know, Crowley wrote a poem about the Titanic, right? Did he? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No idea. Yeah. It was actually interesting. Some, a lot of his poetry is really, really interesting. All right. I hope you enjoyed that episode. And we're going to be cutting a little bit off there's about 30 minutes more where we talk more about random stuff and into hp lovecraft and a couple other things nothing too in depth but still interesting nonetheless 
and that will be in a, another episode releasing here soon. I'm going to utilize it as a a Christmas week episode. There may be one or two more coming out um, in the next few weeks, but being the holidays, it may take a quick break and just focus on some stuff. So I appreciate all the listeners, and I hope you guys have a great holiday, and thank you very much.